on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. You know, I really try and avoid drama, but this new controversy about covert Bitcoin mining practices is something we really need to be aware of. So let's take a look. Dash Detailed is a weekly YouTube show about the privacy-focused digital currency known as Dash. It is hosted by the lovely Amanda B. Johnson and keeps you right up to date about all the exciting developments in the Dash ecosystem. Click the link in the video description and subscribe today. Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse. Your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. Now today is Friday, the 7th of April, 2017. I have two announcements today, and then we'll get right into the main show. Announcement number one is that I've completely rejigged the patrons' packages. Due to a suggestion from a number of listeners, actually, I have created this new supporter plan that allows you to pledge between $1 per month and $20 per month or anything in between so that you can just support the podcast. It doesn't actually include any bonuses. It doesn't include any access to courses. It doesn't include the chat thing, which is the other two levels that I've created. So if you just want to support the podcast and you can spare between $1 a month and $20 per month, you can become a supporter and help out the show. So you can go to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and sign up to that. Announcement number two is that last night I did a special talk for CIMA, C-I-M-A, which is the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. And they contacted me and said, will you do a talk on a, like introduction to cryptocurrencies for our you know, students and our members and our chartered accountants? So they contacted me like weeks and weeks and weeks ago and we did the deal and everything. That's fine. But actually I did it last night. Uh, it was in the evening because it was an evening due that they did. And as you can see from my Twitter feed here, they've um, they've tweeted it out. I didn't actually go and present in person, as you can see from the screenshot. I did it by a like a, a live stream, a private live stream. So they had me projected at the front, and then all of the delegates were in the room, and then we were able to do Q and A. It was pretty sweet. So favor, if you would do me a favor, could you please go to my Twitter feed and like on re or retweet this particular tweet? I'd like you to actually retweet their tweet. Yeah, the one that's the SEMA one. Don't retweet one that I've posted because that will help um, show your support for their support of me, if that makes sense. So if they see a load of people liking and retweeting their tweets about me, that will do uh, my reputation some good and it will kind of be like an expression of thanks for them supporting the cause. And of course, you can get to my Twitter feed by going to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast. The link to my Twitter profile is right on there. Now onto the market roundup, courtesy of coinmarketcap.com. We have a big red day today for the markets. You know, there are only three greens today in the top 20. Uh, Bitcoin is one of them, Golem is another one, and Pivex is a third one. Everything else has fallen by some greater or lesser margin. So let's just highlight the big ones here. Uh, Pivex is actually the biggest winner of the day. A big 14% swing back up to the 87 cents a coin mark putting it back in 15th place. You know, we had a quick look at PIVX a few episodes ago. It stands for Private Instant Verified Transactions. And they've taken many of the good parts of Dash, changed a few things, and in order to be like more competitive. So just the way it should be, really, in the free market. Now I'm going to say Made Safe, uh, Decred, Factum, and Iconomy are all the biggest losers today because they are each down... 10% give or take. I'm also sorry to see down here Steam and the Digix DAO fall outside the top 20. And that's not necessarily any slight on them as a project, so don't take it as that. I mean, as the overall number of successful projects grows, you know, the top 20 is just not going to be sufficient to include everything, which means I'll have to consider expanding my uh, view beyond the top 20. I mean, for example, the stock market in the US, they have the S&P 500, 
and in the UK we have the FTSE 100. So I'm expecting our top dogs in the crypto world to at least number 100. And making a guest appearance today is the Litecoin Segregated Witness Support Segment. I cut this because it was moving much day to day, but you guys said if there's ever any significant moves, then include it back in the show. So today it's here. As you can see from my yellow highlight here, if you're watching this on YouTube rather than listening to it, it says here a SegWit minor support in the current activation period is 65%. And as you can see on Litecoin, the threshold for activation is 75%. So we are within striking distance of activating SegWit on Litecoin. Now, if you go on Reddit, you'll see people getting way too excited because they'll look at this number, which is minor support in the last 24 hours. And actually that's showing 68.4% support. However, 24 hours, it's just too short of a time horizon, which is why I never look at that number. It's just, it changes too quickly. So when I see people going, oh my God, SegWit support for Litecoin is, is it nearly at 70%? That's a complete distortion of the truth because it could change back at any minute and often does before, you know, few, a few hours after they post it. So, which is why I always, I always stick to percentage support in the current activation period. It's based on more data, it's more reliable and less prone to wild swings. So for the new segment then, we go over to one of my old favorites, Coindesk.com. So this latest round of controversy it kicked off when Greg Maxwell, who is a Bitcoin Core developer, and he's also the chief technology officer of a company called Blockstream, he posted something on Reddit about a flaw in the Bitcoin mining algorithm. So Bitcoin miners are supposed to generate you know, millions of random numbers, put each one of them through this math mathematical function in an effort to generate a result, which is a number that starts with a zero. And supposedly there's no way to predict the result of any given number that you put in, meaning your only option is to generate many, many random numbers, generate as many as possible, as fast as possible, run them through the mathematical formula until you find a result that starts with a zero. And then the first miner in each 10 minute block that finds the result starting with a zero, they get to decide which set of transactions get confirmed. They earn the 12 and a half Bitcoin reward for all of that hard work. Then it all starts again for the next 10 minute block. And that in a nutshell is the Bitcoin mining process. Now this floor quote, supposedly allows a Bitcoin miner to narrow down the number of possibilities to make it more likely to find the solution before anybody else. So that's the overall setup. Now let's see what we can find out beyond that. It says here of note is that this technology has already been patented by developers Timo Hank and Sergio Damian Lerner in a scheme called ASIC Boost, for which a patent was filed in November of 2014. So this means the this technology, this ASIC Boost thing, is the thing, is the technology that's exploiting this flaw. And it's not new. It's been widely known about for a while. But supposedly there's been a gentleman's agreement not to use it because it would give an unfair advantage in the mining race. Well, that's a trust issue. You know, you are trusting essentially one of your business competitors, other Bitcoin miners, not to use a technology that can give them an advantage and make them more money. I don't think that's very reliable, do you? So let's move on here. In the orange bit, it says, taking a step further into speculation, the inference of the post by Greg Maxwell is that Segregated Witness, a scaling solution developed and proposed by the Bitcoin core team, would render the covert version of this ASIC boost discovered obsolete, hurting the bottom line of many miners using the workaround. So you know we've been talking about you know, what technologies should be integrated into the Bitcoin software in order to move it forward, and Segregated Witness is one of them. Now to SegWit's credit, if it were implemented, it prevents any miners from using this quote cheat. You know, many Bitcoin miners have been refusing to support the SegWit technology. Is this the reason why? Are some of them using this cheat? Do they know that SegWit stamps it out? And is that why they oppose SegWit? So those are the important questions that we now need to explore. 
Moving on here, it says the allegation that the miners engaged in the practice is China-based Bitmain, one of the industry's largest providers of mining equipment. It says Bitmain has a separate patent for this ASIC boost technology in China. And the allegation is that they've engaged in this practice of using these, this technology. It then says that in a statement, Bitmain co-founder Jihan Wu has vehemently denied that the company is using the ASIC boost workaround on the Bitcoin blockchain. Well, we could reasonably expect this to be denied. So that's not a surprise to me either way, whether it's true or false. You'd expect it to be denied, wouldn't you? I just find it interesting that this ASIC boost technology is patented. You know, it's patented by those two guys we mentioned a minute ago, Tom and Sergio. But now we find out that Bitmain, one of the main manufacturers of Bitcoin mining hardware, holds its own patent, its own separate patent in China. Now that's important because if you have a patent for a technology, that makes the product that they sell better than their competitors. It's then very tempting to include it because then more Bitcoin mining farms will buy your equipment because they know it will be more profitable. Could Bitmain manufacture Bitcoin mining equipment? They obviously have competitors that are manufacturing similar hardware. And when they go out and sell it to these big Bitcoin mining farms, the sales guy is going to say, well, our stuff is faster than their stuff. It's going to be more profitable if you mine with our hardware versus their hardware. So if you had a patent on a technology that could make your product better than the competition, wouldn't you use it? It then goes on to say here, down in the green, even those involved in the debate acknowledge that, given present information, it remains difficult to prove whether the allegations are true. These are the kinds of things that really frustrate me. You know, speculation and allegation that are plausible but unprovable. And I, I personally have a deep desire for truth, and I'm willing to actually surrender my current beliefs in exchange. But it's the never-ending philosophical question of how do we know what's true? It's actually a coincidence that I was pondering that very question yesterday before I read this story. So I'd really love to get your input on this. If you would be so kind, please write me a comment answering this question. How do you personally decide what is true? Where do you go to find the truth? And do you go to the Bible? Do you go to your grandparents? Do you go to your spouse? Do you go to your mentor? I am really interested in as many answers as possible here. So please indulge me on this particular thing, even though it's somewhat off topic. So with that said, back down to earth and let's continue here. In the blue bit, it says former COO, which I assume is chief operating officer of Bitcoin mining firm BTCC, Samsung Mao, told Coindesk, quote, this is not something you're going to get solid proof for, but there's smoking guns all around. All the science points to manipulation, close quote. Now, there's no need for me to comment on that. I just wanted to include it in the show as an extra bit of curiosity there. Skipping down here to this heading that says exploitation or efficiency. At the center of the issue is whether the specific technology use represents a natural desire for a competitive advantage and whether miners can be working, quote, against the network if no rule prevents them from engaging in the activity. This is almost the textbook definition of controversy. There's nothing technically preventing miners from using this technology. I've referred to it a couple of times now as, quote, a cheat, but that's actually an ethical judgment since there's no actual rule that, pre that prevents them from using it, right? I think the root of the problem is the technology is patented. That centralizes power on the patent holder because they can then decide how to use that power. That's not the direction that the community as a whole wants to go, is it? I thought most of us were working to spread the power out. I thought that's what was wrong with the old system that we're working to replace. Now, if the technology were open source and every miner could use it without restriction, well, then everybody would, thereby eliminating the unfair advantage. Then, even if a Bitcoin improvement like SegWit comes along, which threatens to make the ASIC boost technology obsolete, well, then it would become obsolete for everybody and thus 
nothing is lost. But it's precisely because there is suspicion that the playing field is not level that causes the friction. Those with the edge want to keep the edge purely out of self-interest. That's actually a good point to end on. It's self-interest that leads people to patent things in the first place. And the beauty of open source technology is that you put your creation into, say, the Bitcoin cooking pot, it gets amplified throughout the whole Bitcoin network, and it ultimately comes back to you by creating a slightly better world for you to live in and to enjoy. That is how I personally reconcile the conflict between self-interest and my interest in helping others. If you look at the bigger picture and think in longer time horizons, it allows you to surrender immediate gratification for a much greater gratification a little while later, when those gifts that you gave the world creates a better world for you to live in. So thanks for joining me today, guys. If you liked this episode, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Please leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. And please support the Cryptoverse and boost cryptocurrency adoption by going to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and becoming a patron. From just a few dollars a month, you can secure Cryptoversity's future, get unlimited access to all Cryptoversity courses, and access a private patrons-only chat group where you get direct access to me. That is all for today, guys. I'll be back on Monday with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.